Welcome to a, another commentary done by Diggity. Bottom left hand corner, we have the brown Terran, which is going to be I am Jiraiya. Bottom right hand corner, we have Master A, who switched his color up. That last color, first of all, was winning color. Second of all, it was so good. Now he's the mustard yellow, which is like the most stereotypical. It's like any color yellow is the stereotypical Protoss color, right? But not quite as, uh, not quite as, is there orange? I wonder, like, I would like to see a bright, hot orange Protoss, like the neon colors. We got the neon pink out there, but I feel like a neon orange would be entertaining. Anyway, this is BSL Season 13 Hasu League Group A, the second match of the winner's match. Jiraiya putting up an amazing fight in Game 1, but Master Ray able, and honestly, I felt like he was in a winning position multiple times, but was able to recover. It looks like Master Ray going to do the standard pylon at his natural expansion. This is going to be on Ascension. Let's see if Jiraiya, this is actually a map where I like the Nine Pool opener uh, more for a lot of reasons. Pylon located there. But Master Ray really showing why he is Master Ray and why he was the champion last season. Finding a way to sneak back into the match. And I really like his decision to take that risky Nexus. And he played map position. Really, it was the map positioning and keeping Jiraiya off guard uh, that really played out. It looks like he's going to open Gateway once again. This time we are seeing... What looks like is going to be, we'll see if, uh, no, yeah, no indication of a pool yet. So, well, I take it back. Let's see if this goes to the natural expansion or not. Looks like it is going to be 12 pool, sorry, 11 hatch. Sorry. Can't talk all of a sudden. In my brain, I was like 11 hatch, but my my mouth said 11 pool as he was moving off the creep, which is going to give initial zealots an opportunity to go ahead and do some harassment at the natural, uh, at the natural expansion. I feel like as far as gateway openers versus Zerg opponents, this is exactly what you want to see as far as their build order opening. Probe making its way. It's going to end up scouting last there, the spawning pool down. So 11 hatch, this is this is the standard build over these days. And I should stop saying 12 hatch. 12 hatch was the old old thing. Modern these days is 11 hatch, uh, 10 spawning pool, and then redroning from there. Just because of the slight speed advantages you get in pulling the additional zerglings out. Probe going to be able to shoot that gap, uh, move from there. The other thing, I kind of like gateway openers more than I like forge openers on this map because of this little gap right here where zealots can it's you know a little bit wide but zealots can hold there with fewer numbers and kind of push zerglings back and get in better engagement situations probe now going ahead going ahead and harassing that natural expansion or sorry harassing the main i can't talk today maybe i did not get enough i felt like i got decent sleep last night maybe i did not drone making its way across to scout overlord slowly making its way that direction and a third drone making way. It should see that Zealot incoming. So natural expansion up. Looks like you do see six Zerglings being built. An additional Zerg, uh, additional Zealot making its way across. And that Zealot tapping that hatchery rather than going into the main, interestingly enough. Okay, it looks like now Master A moving it to the main. We do see that third hatchery uh, nearby for Jiraiya. The probes looks like it's going to get wiped out before engaging the Zealot. The Zealot already in the back mineral line to go ahead and be annoying there. This Zealot holding up short. Interestingly enough, maybe just waiting for these Zerglings to get expended. Some nice shuffling there by Jiraiya to preserve some Zerglings. So it looks like he's still going to have the five of the initial six, and he's produced some additional Zerglings out here in the field. These Zerglings getting some shield damage before the Zis this Zealot's reacting and getting some additional damage done. This drone actually getting in the fight. Yeah, battle drone. Get it. Is that drone going to get the kill? That would be hype. Oh, I want to see it. 17 health. No, it looks like he's going to have to back off. Natural expansion is going up. We do have a forge. Two additional zealots on the front behind this. And so we're seeing a shift around situation where Jiraiya actually preserving a lot of zerglings in the midst of this, which could give him an opportunity for map control. And once again, yeah, and a cannon on the front. Once again, this is one of those situations where I feel like Jiraiya, as far as the small early game shenanigans... Not in a bad position. He produced a lot of Zerglings, but it's going to give him that map control. The thing is, is he needs to seize the map control behind this, doing as much damage on that gateway as he can. Actually getting some damage on the Zealot, losing a Zergling for his effort, unfortunately. And that Zealot is going to recharge that shield. Is Jiraiya going to... Okay, now he's backing off. Really did an immense amount of damage on that gateway, actually. So if he wanted to follow this up with a 973, and I feel like having that gateway down that low is going to be a real threat. To Master Ray. He's got to really think about that 973 as a follow up counter. This Overlord planted the natural expansion, seeing that Stargate being built. Still no gas for Jiraiya. He's planting it down now. So, as far as an opportunity to do that, and he's kind of doing a similar build to game one. And I have to admit, I don't know the strengths or weaknesses of this build overall. The going for four hatcheries 
Maybe it's just to try to pump your economy a little bit earlier. Uh, yeah, just have a, a stronger early game economy. Rely on Zerglings as far as your defense. Master Ray maybe looked at the replay because he's moving out with a lot of Zealots right now. The Zerglings have been split. Let's see how he counters with this. He's actually going up. So yeah, this is going to be five hatcheries before Den again, which is very new. Just And starting to mine gas once again behind this. Not enough... Zerglings to defend. No Sunken Colony here at the Natural Expansion as well. The Zerglings starting to gather up. The Zealots exiting to the north. Actually getting a better engagement point, picking off a Zergling. And now you have a lot of Zerglings. I like Master Ray's positioning, trying to grab that ramp. You can see where the Zerglings trying to shuffle through, but because of the choice of locations, yes, the Zealot goes down, but they're going to kill a lot of these Zerglings in that exchange and Master Ray still has two Zealots standing and might get some drones here at this this three o'clock base. So more Zerglings are running forward to go ahead and engage these Zealots, but that's forcing a lot of drones, or sorry, a lot of uh, potential, what would have been drones, larva, to be morphed into Zerglings rather than anything else. Although Jiraiya is still running a sizable bank behind this. Hydro Sten now up. So, and Master Ray also getting all sorts of scouting information behind this. He should actually just, I mean, he can build a Corsair if he wants, but I would honestly skip Corsair at this stage, walking into the base and getting all this scouting information, this Zealot still holding right there. This high, So Hydros is going to be produced. Hi, looks like the Corsair is still harassing this natural expansion, now taking some damage right there. It looks like the drones... So a drone died. Poor corpse right there. The Zerglings grouped up around its uh, corpse. But yeah, Master Ray kind of getting a look at this, and I think he's going to be thinking the same thing I am, which is like, yeah, this is not what I'm used to seeing uh, in this matchup. So we got three hatcheries at the, at the third, two hatcheries here for six total. Hydral Sten, second gas being grabbed. More Zealots making their way out. The one thing I do like about this from Jiraiya's play is because it allows him to be more mineral heavy early, it allows him to pump that drone count faster. And I think that really suits his style of play. Where he's like, okay, if you don't come at me early, if you try to play more defensive Protoss style, I'm going to flood you in the mid game much more rapidly. So I'm not going to bother with 973. I'm not going to bother with anything else. I'm going to force you to come at me fast, which works very much against the standard Protoss game style, which is to shell up and play more. To, and it provides more opportunity uh, to kind of do that shell up style. It looks like Mast Ray, as far as a counter, keeping his eyes, looking for that lair, but moving some Zelts to the north. Let's see if he can push this. Unfortunately, Jiraiya at this stage, has started to fill in those units. And it looks like he's going to... Let's see if he actually goes straight from layer. Uh, it would be interesting if he kind of rushed straight from layer straight to Hive behind this as well. But grabbing it... Because he's got that third gas capped already. He does have this evolution chamber. It looks like he's only got a single evol evolution chamber in this configuration thus far. But I kind of like this style of play. And I like it against what's kind of currently happening in the kind of a yet the other evolution of the Zerg versus Protoss meta. And yeah, I think it might pay out for him because Master Ray still sitting in the two base, still a little bit concerned about like 973-ish sort of action here. But this is a situation where I feel like um, he might have actually been able to push out and grab a third potentially. Heidel is starting to move out at this stage, maybe go for a two base contain. Jiraiya already at, so we're at the eight minute something mark and he's practically at 50 drones already and he's already grabbed a fourth. Very aggressive macro style. Hydralisks cycling around the north. Engaging the Zealots at that gap. This is a, a great place to engage. But he's got to, again, worry about busts on that front door as far as a follow-up. Sizestorm being upgraded. Level 1 weapons. Uh, already finished the level 2 weapons engaging. It looks like the Zealots finding that hatchery. So this might have to be canceled. The Hydralisks out of position to go ahead and deal with it. So that's going to be a cancellation. And more Hydralisks moving up to go ahead and engage these Zealots to see if they can go ahead and uh, deal with that in sufficient numbers. But you can see Master Ray, yeah, just, yeah, now walking up with his attack force, engaging right here. I don't know that Mas uh, that Jiraiya has enough Hydralisks to push and engage. But here's the thing, in short order, in a minute or two, if he wanted to, he could. Because he has a huge economy behind this. Jiraiya with the supply count lead, he's got all sorts of drones. Looks like he is uh, getting the overlord speed before he opts for anything else also getting lurker tech behind this so it delays tech a little bit but in this overall build order it does put him in a good situation to just start pumping units a lot more rapidly than other stereotypical zerg builds and the master ray however taking this opportunity like okay you're not going to have the tech you're not going to have a lot of troops i'm going to distract you with these zealots and go ahead and just grab additional bases 
while you're doing all of that action because I'm not worried about a lurker contain because I know that lurker contains coming much later. So robotic facility uh, warping in should be in time alongside. He's uh, looks like got five gateways, six gateways with that one on the front behind it. He's just now upgrading dragoon range. He's going to start filling in dragoons in pretty sufficient order. And I think he can defend both locations, particularly because he can just sneak down with this army from the three o'clock base uh, to help defend that natural expansion and sometimes even do pincer attacks in the midst of that. Some lurkers being morphed in. Jiraiya once again going into more of that shell style, grabbing that expansion in the upper left. It looks like he's starting to cycle towards the six o'clock base to maybe grab an additional, uh, an additional expansion right there as well to stay in the overall economic lead. I do like that he's abusing this high ground. Ooh, good so side storm right there though. And actually a pretty good dodge from Jiraiya. Didn't take as much damage as I expected him to. But you can see just abusing this high ground, popping down, forcing some Psy Storms. Jiraiya playing fantastically in this match. Yeah, just really abusing uh, that advantage because there's just no vision here. Popping in, attacking a little bit, popping back out. He's starting to macro up. And has a is still ahead in supply. Now the question is, is with the looking for a second forge, if there is a second forge, somewhere in Master Ray's base. It looks like he's sticking on one forge uh, thus far. The upgrade question is the next question behind this, because both players are sitting at just on one evolution chamber versus one forge. I'm not sure that's going to be the decider in the match. So I think the deciding factor, again, is going to be uh, map control and map fluidity. And currently, it looks like Jiraiya is sitting on five base. He's got a pile of lurkers, a pile of hydralisks nearby. Jiraiya, or sorry, Master Ray is going to sneak out with a handful of these zealots, so it's turning into a long-term macro style match. He's going to try to set up at this base, but keep in mind, he's already one base behind at this stage of things as Jiraiya has not yet saturated, but he has grabbed this five o'clock base. And let's see if these drones uh, can manage to get back. Keep in mind, that's not quite saturated as of yet. The Overlord's spotting that uh, to the north. In the meantime, some cannons and this pylon. I'm not sure I would take out the pylon. Maybe that pylon will get rebuilt. Yeah, rebuild pylon there uh, to either corner. But that gateway going to remain unpowered and the forge remain unpowered. Level 2 weapons uh, online. Ma Jiraiya just diving on everything here in that upper right-hand corner. And now Master Ray needs to get a move on, honestly, because Jiraiya, maybe the moment has actually already passed. He's trying to flood in these units. Got a good size storm. He's going to have to rely on his size storms to win this battle from this point on because the supply is a huge favorite is f in Jiraiya's favor. Good side storms over those lurkers and actually cleaning up this army fantastic. And as I said, oh, he needs to do good side storms. Side storms just obliterating that army. Honestly, that looked like a little like windshield wiper sort of thing with, uh, you know how you have like that pesky stain and you just got to keep wiping. It was like the side storm was the wiper and the hydralisks were that stain underneath. They were just getting, they got obliterated underneath all of that. Jiraiya still holds the supply lead, but... Mastery able to follow this up to just cap that expansion confidently. He did expend a lot of size storms in the midst of this, but he's got a strong standing army that's starting to push out. He still needs to get aggressive behind this, either in taking additional expansions, uh, tech, in something. Uh, looks like we do have double evolution chambers now up for Jiraiya, so he will end up getting the that lead eventually. But he's also got that supply lead behind all of this currently, looking to pick off the observers... Good size storms again from Master Ray. Catching a lot of these lurkers in Hydalus. The Hydalus is just being forced to dance, dance, dance as they're just eating size storms. The Dragoons peeling up those zealots. There's only one lurker left. Nice staggered formation, but it looks like an enclosure of Hydalus now starting to press in on this as the size storms have entirely been expended. And now I think Jiraiya is kind of doing like, as far as like a boxing metaphor, he's exhausted his opponent, I think, where. Master Ray expending too much in the middle, and he's continuing to surge. Maybe a second army gathering up the field, only one High Templar in the grouping with them. Still no... So there are double forges down, but they're remaining silent at this stage of things. We've got level 2 weapons online. Master Ray is, I think, in trouble here. Uh, Ventral Sacks also being upgraded, so that's going to be a potential drop situation. And there's a lot of territory for Master Ray to cover. He's behind significantly in supply. He's behind in upgrades. Jiraiya is expanding everywhere, so he's ahead in macro. And he's loading up. It looks like a drop potentially to go in the main. And here's the thing. If Master Ray engages... Maybe if he, he runs in and engages this right now and dives with a big attack to Jiraiya's front, it looks like he's cycling around to the north. He could mitigate this attack. 
As it stands, though, this is just a, a hatchery cancellation, which I don't think Jiraiya is too upset about. Oh, this army is going to be out of position, I think, in the midst of this to deal with this drop. And this is a lot. This is on top of the, the gateway lines. Yeah, the Hydra is dropping. Master Ray re-engaging across the middle. Let's see if he ends up running across a lot of lurkers. This is a multiple. This is all sorts of brown in the base. It looks like some gateway is going to get wiped out. Everything else. He's going to go ahead and dive. Try to take out this 9 o'clock base. That could be an even exchange overall. Reinforcements trying to move in. It looks like they might be able to clean things up with Psy Storms. If nothing else. Master Ray holding up a moment. He's actually in the red as far as trying to be able to cope with this. The attack force, there's finally an observer engaging with the rest of the attack force. The forge was taken out, which is going to be a critical component. And it, Jiraiya just loading up his attack force and exiting, leaving the lurkers to buy time. A lot of probes died at the main as well. But this is going to allow a, especially taking that forge, because that forge was pretty well down the line as far as that upgrade went. Master Ray still in the red, so he's going to need to rebuild. Now, with that attack finished, going to re-engage at that 9 o'clock base. I actually wish he just... He didn't know what troops were in his way. I wish he just engaged with it. He's certainly going to be able to take this hatchery out. But let's see if the... And it looks like taking out a lot of drones there as well. Jiraiya re-engaging. Jiraiya near 200 supply. So how long is it going to take him to clear this attack force out is the next question. And the next question is, is does it matter? So that hatchery wiped out. Let's see if he can move to the north and wipe that hatchery out as well. That would be a big win. You can see huge amounts of reinforcements starting to careen this direction. Huge storms taking out the drones right there, but Jirai is still at a huge supply lead overall. Master Ray has a gigantic bank, so I'm not sure that he was worried about losing a lot of that supply behind this. And Master Ray now trying to move on top of these lurkers to the north. It looks like just a zealot and two dragoons working on that hatchery. This could be the move that gets him back in this match. All of this attack force getting picked off. That observer going to escape, but... Jiraiya not in time to defend that hatchery. It looks like he went for a redrop in the main behind this. There is an Archon, an Overlord, and a Dragoon behind this. And a Dragoon with three kills. The veteran of the war, able to escape to tell the tale. Like my entire army was wiped out, but I was the lone survivor. So, Jiraiya going to need to rebuild. His economy stifled momentarily. He still has a 70 supply lead. And critically... Level 2 weapons, level 1 armor, that upgrade advantage about even with Master Ray at the moment, but with that missing forge, he has an opportunity to go ahead and get that upgrade advantage, and with having that supply and the upgrade advantage, that's oftentimes going to be the Doom situation. And this Dragoon, what a hero, kills the drone, slows Jiraiya down further, is moving to the north, it's going to attack that hatchery, I assume, with the last bit of health that it has, continuing to create distraction. This, someone needs to, to write a story about that Dragoon. What a hero for the battle. One o'clock location. Being grabbed. Jiraiya repiling a lot of his troops in the middle. Now here's the thing. in the Even though Master Ray slowing that down a little bit. And even though his main uh, pretty well saturated. he and he, Yeah, he's running at four bases. Um, I'm not sure if he's long for life. Again, because of the upgrade differential. Again, because 200 supply for Jiraiya. Uh, as long as he keeps up with that upgrade. He's actually at Hive as well. His main looking a little bit thin, but I'm not sure that's much of a difference. Adrenal upgrades upgrading. We're starting to see a shift towards the melee upgrades as well. Two additional hatcheries being grabbed. And I'm not sure that Master Ray can do anything about it. Master Ray filling troops in behind this. A little bit overdroned. But Jiraiya, if he's going to win this match, does need to capitalize... On what he's got. Mastery moving up. I think trying to clear to grab an expansion. You're running into a lot of Hydralisks. A lot of Hydralisks moving in. And Lurkers moving in from the south. The Observer's picked off. And I don't see any additional Observer. Sorry, there's one in the far back field. Some Hydralisks sneaking in underneath. To maybe go for a potential pincer. No, it's just going to go ahead and engage that 9 o'clock. And another drop in the main in the midst of this. Jiraiya is everywhere. There are cannons here. Great Psy Storm, which I think is going to clear those lurkers out. But despite all this, this is delaying Master Ray. And that's allowing him to go ahead and get his bases saturated. And keep his economy rolling. And again, I think time is... Yeah, level 2 Carapace just kicked online. I think time is now in Jiraiya's favor. 
Because his upgrades, yeah, in favor now. Engaging with Zerglings, although he still needs to keep cohesive armies in these engagement points. Lurkers here, no, there's an Observer alongside that Observer being forced back. Going to have to exit this. Not a lot to deal with this. Still trying to re-engage in the middle. So action happening in the middle of the map and Master Ray's main. I think the Lurkers are going to be able to clear that out with some Psy Storm. Forcing the point in the middle of the map as well. No Psy Storms. Looks like High Temple are getting wiped out in the midst of that. So a bit of a mistake. Lurkers just running in unburrowed to rest this attack force. And this is a true swarm now bearing down on Master Ray's army. And Master Ray, I believe, is in trouble. All Jirai has to do is keep up his macro behind this. And I think Master Ray is going to be pinned into just these bases. In fact, I'm looking for Jiraiya to maybe set up a contain up on this high ground. Just plant some lurkers down. Yeah, plopping those lurkers down now. Continue to drop. <laughs> Exiting with the handful of these attack forces. Continue to drop back in the main. If he can get a defiler up here, that will be matched. It looks like he doesn't have these bases saturated all that well. Critically is missing the gases again. Looks like he's going to reinforce uh, those expansions with drones. They're out in the field, but I really like Jiraiya's position here. More lurkers moving up, and Master Ray in a lot of trouble. Although somehow, in the midst of this, probably because of his sizable bank, he's managed to even up the supply lead. Still behind in upgrades overall, though level 3 weapons is going to be online here momentarily. But this is a very formidable Hydra Lurk position. I'm not sure. So Master Ray needs to bust out, get some additional bases, and maybe if he can get some drops... Even things up. Hydralis is poking away at the front, eating a Psy Storm, taking down a cannon, but they're cleaned up summarily. One o'clock base has a Nidus Canal. That's functioning. It looks like this upper left hand base is functioning a little bit. And Jiraiya testing the corner lines, moving in with Lurkers and Hydralis. Unfortunately, that is a great location to Psy Storm as well. And there is a High Templar in position with decent amounts of storms. That cannon actually on the low ground able to hit with the Observer. So the Hydra's pushing in. It looks like they are going to be able to wipe that out. The Observer's storming some ultra, uh, some ultra, some Lurkers up. But while that was happening, a counter drop in the main. Wiping out cannons again, getting on the Nexus. Master Ray actually still has minerals to work with here just because this ex expansion has been dropped so often. Psy storming his own probes to try to clear these Zerglings up. And critically, is going to end up losing his Observatory, which is going to make those Lurkers even stronger. In the mid-game. Master Ray once again in the red, which is rare to see in PvZ matches. Usually it's the Zerg that supply gapped. Master Ray trying to bust out and deal with this Lurker contained to the north. Looks like he's clearing out these Hydralisks' beautiful Psy Storms to reestablish that high ground in the midst of this uh, attack to the south. Both players back down to 130 supply. Master Ray with the much larger bank behind all of this, somehow, which is shocking. However, Jiraiya with a larger bank as far as potential minerals to be harvested. Just a testament to Master Ray's ability to hang in matches. This is crazy. His 3 o'clock base, which is his third, mined out before his main. Let that sink in. With the amount of harassment that happened there, Jiraiya swinging through. Is able to wipe that out. His natural expansion is looking rather thin. So he's down to effectively one mining base that's also thin. So Master Ray needs to bust out. Again, he's got a lot of resources. He's got 8,000 minerals to do it with, though. Keep in mind. So it's not like he's starving out anytime soon. But if this continues, he will end up starving out over the long term. Jiraiya continuing to press into this. Looking to retake that high ground. No Psy Storms here for Master Ray. There's the turnaround Psy Storm finally. A glut of Observers with his attack force, but didn't need him this time. And once again, Jiraiya takes the high ground. Rather than waiting on top of it, though, he's going to dive in to that 3 o'clock base, which honestly he doesn't need to do at this stage. That base is mined out. But wiping out location, more reinforcements flooding in across that mini-map, as you can see. And Master Ray can't seem to muster an army to deal with what Jiraiya is throwing at him. 
drag continuing to careening forward, and now it's just that surge of Zerg finally punching through more Psy Storms being dropped. There's GG from Master Ray. So despite a valiant effort, Jiraiya, with just an overwhelming Zerg power Zerg economy, able to take that match. Hope you guys enjoyed it. We will move on to the final match of the winner's bracket in what is turning out to be an intense back-and-forth slugfest between Jiraiya and Master Ray. Thanks for listening.